Okay, this is something that I don't recommend doing if you're new to uh, sports betting, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this anyways, okay? This is kind of done by default. I like to back these up with uh, spread bets, and I will bet a lot lower amounts on these money lines, okay? And um, these money line underdogs will come through depending on if you do it right and it takes a lot of patience for these to work out okay so I'm gonna explain this Milwaukee Phoenix game and why they won as an underdog here but I'm in this video I'm gonna be talking about this New Orleans Utah game and why New Orleans won this game as a nine point underdog okay and you anybody can do this you don't need inside information okay Anyone can figure this stuff out. It just takes a lot of patience, okay? It takes patience, it takes determination, and it takes a little bit of skill, all right? And a little bit of luck, obviously, but this is very possible over the long term if you do the same exact strategy, okay? So... We got Utah and New Orleans here, okay? As a, Utah's a big underdog, and this video is strictly for money line underdogs, okay? Like I said, I recommend spreads, but if you want a, a little bit more, you can go ahead and take the money line, you know, in a smaller wager or whatever you do, but this is how it works, okay? So we got New Orleans and Utah. Like I said, you don't need no information inside information okay this is com completely possible to do if you do the right handicapping okay so as you see here the way I went into this game here okay I thought about it is Utah's gonna have a letdown in this game okay because of the way they've been playing and if, if you look at here how they've been playing okay this is very critical if, if this strategy is going to work for you. Okay, so we got Utah here on a four-game winning streak, okay? Not including this game right here, okay? So they're on a four-game winning streak. That's very critical. Now, take a look at these two teams that they just played, okay? This is very important. They just played Denver, okay, and they won, all right? This is a divisional team. Denver Nuggets is a divisional opponent in the same division, okay? They beat Denver, which is a top team in the division. Now they go and play at home again. They go they go from Denver back home and they play the Milwaukee Bucks, which which is a top team in the East. They're the number 1 team in the East record-wise right now. Okay? And if you watch this game against Milwaukee, um, I don't have the clip up, but if you watch this game against Milwaukee, they Milwaukee had a 16 or 15 point lead in that game, I believe. It was around a 10 point lead in the first quarter, and then in the second half, in the fourth quarter, I believe they had another 10 point lead. Okay, very wild swings in this Milwaukee Jazz game. Okay. And the Jazz ended up beating Milwaukee. So Milwaukee had the lead by 10 points twice in that game. Okay. So they just beat, Utah just beat two top teams in the league. Denver in their division and Milwaukee, the best team in the East. Okay. So obviously what's going to happen in this next game, they, come, they play the Pelicans at home. There's going to be some type of letdown. Okay. So... It's, it's a, already a given that you would go against the Utah Jazz on the spread here, okay? Which that was an easy win, okay? Easy. Didn't look easy at first, but that would be by default. You would take the spread. Now, the way the money line works is you got to be a little bit more patient when you play a money line because that's why they're big underdogs because they're not always going to win. But you can, you can collect the the juice that's going to pay and when they do win it's really nice because you're going to collect all that juice the all that money for um you know all this right here plus 435 you're going to collect 
that's four units okay so it's totally worth it four units compared to losing one unit okay if you were take to take the spread okay that's a a big payout there okay so they play the Pelicans you know there's gonna be some sort of setback okay they're gonna revert back to their average or whatever you want to call it all right so now the reason why they win as an underdog all right is because of the fact of how they've been playing okay so they play Denver and Milwaukee okay so you have to take a gamble you have to take a chance here on the Pelicans because they're going to have some sort of letdown. And not only that, they have the Pelicans again on a back-to-back. -back, but that doesn't – or on the fourth. That doesn't even really matter. Okay? The point is is that they just played Denver and Milwaukee, two of the top teams in the league. Okay? So the probability of them winning another game, okay, against a weaker, weaker team, okay, because the Pelicans are not a, a great team at all. They're one of the worst teams in the league, okay? So there's going to be, you know, this is a great opportunity for an upset here, okay? So you have to take that chance. You just have to because they just beat two top teams, all right? So that is the reason why uh, Milwaukee, or uh, that is the reason why New Orleans was able to win this game here, okay? And if you take a look at how this game was going, if you, you can just tell that the Jazz were not into this game. They were pro uh, mostly unmotivated to play this game, okay? They had about a fit. The, the biggest lead they had in this game was about a 15-point lead, but you can just tell if you're watching the game that the Pelicans were hanging around. They had a nine-point lead going into the third quarter, okay? And then let's, let's fast-forward this a little bit. I want to go to see it's a 10 point game here with nine minutes to go. And I, I, I was saying to myself, like, you know, if the Pelicans can just hang around, the Jazz are going to get bored. They're going to get bored and the and the Pelicans are going to make a run. And sure enough, look what happens here. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Pelicans are still hanging around. And then look at this. The Jazz pull away again. They're, they're up 11 with 8.51 to go. And then this is when they start to collapse, okay? And this is exactly what the casinos want. Now, look at this. They're up by they're up by 11 with 8 minutes to go, and then they completely fall apart. Now, watch this, okay? You see this, how with 6 minutes and 8-point game, Pelicans are starting to make a run here. Completely dissecting this game. Now, look at this. See this? A lot of people would say a game like this is fixed, but just look at how they go, okay? A lot of people would say a game like this is fixed, but I do not believe in that because of the fact that it's human nature for a team to have a setback after these two quality wins, okay? Look at, look at the big run that the Pelicans made with about six minutes to go. Because, you know, what happened was the Jazz were just unmotivated. Like I said, if the Pelicans could stay around within 9 points, 10 points of that cover, the Jazz are going to get bored. You know, and that's what happened. Pelicans ended up coming back and winning this game. Right here, Jazz had a 1-point lead. They, they were just fatigued, you know, completely fatigued. And they just didn't want it. They didn't want the game as much as the Pelicans did. All right, so this was the big rebound here, and then the game's over. You know, Randall makes two free throws. I believe it was Randall. Yeah, he makes two. He makes two free throws to make it a three-point game, and then it's just over. Point nine left. They don't even get the ball inbounded. Look at it was out of bounds on. Um, I believe Anthony Davis was on the inbound pass here. And they didn't even get the ball in bounds, and that was a turnover. So um, New Orleans ended up getting the ball back. You know, they didn't. Jazz didn't even get a shot up. So that's just it, guys. Like you just gotta look at these teams. It's it has a lot to do with the scheduling. Okay, that's how you break down these teams and what's gonna happen in the future game. So that is why the Pelicans won this game outright as a nine-point underdog. Ten-point. The ten-point spread was almost. You know, a great play.
you know, almost 90% right there that they would cover this game. The probability was pretty high that the Pelicans would cover this game, right? But um, it's not what you saw, you know, during the game flow. But like I said, you get a favorite like that that gets bored, you know, the underdog will come through. So I'll be back with another video. Thanks for watching this one. And I'll be back with some more informational videos coming up.